Hey man, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, hopefully we will get our Ford 555 back up and running. Uh, so the deal is, there's still no hydraulic power. I replaced the pump. Um, yeah. I mean, there's only, for men, there's only two real types of problems, right? There's problems that are hard to fix, and that requires some basic amount of knowledge and some hand tools, and uh, maybe a little, you know, research as to what, particular fix is going to fix your particular problem and then there's other problems that are really hard to fix but those are the two categories the really hard to fix ones are like you have to like buy special tools you have to do in-depth research like learn a new skill uh, and figure out a system that you've never dealt with before and that's what this is welcome to man time So if you're like me, you're probably extremely skeptical that anything that we do here could possibly uh, remedy the situation. But there is the main pressure relief valve. And there's actually two in this system. Um, so I followed the lines from the pump back. There's two T's. One feeds this uh, manifold for the backhoe. The other one feeds the manifold for the loader. Both of them have a system relief right there. So... Uh, I think if either one of these are bad, um, the, you know, the whole system is not going to work. So we'll check this one, see if we can adjust it, and then we'll check the other one up there. But basically what's happening, if that thing isn't uh, building the pressure, it's opened, uh, it's sending the pressure just back through the system and not charging uh, this system. So. so for these really hard problems, it's nice to have something to refer to, you know, specifically the actual loader tractor backhoe actual repair manual that's like 800 pages so I took some time grabbed a nice glass of Pinot some stinky cheese and read through the majority of this now starting here with troubleshooting obviously uh, this one here gets you perform the system relief valve pressure checks and adjust if necessary <clears throat> So that was where I started, basically, when I went to the vehicle, when it was still all assembled, uh, adjusted the pressure relief, and it was already adjusted to as tight as it could go, meaning as high a pressure as it could generate. Uh, then, coming back here, and finally deciding, all right, I need to disassemble this, because there's something not right about it. Uh, I took off this cap, and then, luckily nothing came flying out, although something could have. Uh, I tried to get this piece off right in here uh, because this is the main relief valve, right? This number here, number 10, main relief valve. So I'm thinking if the main relief valve has a failure in it, there's no pressure because the backhoe uh, valve body here supplies the loader. And if it's dumping, it dumps to a T and goes back into the uh, to the reservoir. So, this is where I focused my efforts. Um, took that cap off, tried to adjust it. Nothing, nothing good happened there. Uh, I did notice this is that relief valve, and this is the pressure adjustment cap. So, I'm thinking my problem is in here somewhere. So I've got that part off of the tractor, and we are going to take a look at it. All right, so here is our main pressure relief valve. And if you're wondering how to get this off of your tractor, well, it's the most difficult thing I have ever done on a, on a big diesel industrial piece of equipment. It was uh, about 50% easier than just taking the whole thing off of there. Um, two things I didn't have to do was remove all of the hoses, labeling them as I took them off, and then remove all of the levers from the top of the spools um, but, I mean, these three bolts, there's, there's three through bolts through the whole system into here. And then there's, uh, two bolts on here and one on the other side that holds the entire spool, uh, to a, a mounting plate on the backhoe. 
So I had to remove, of course, uh, three nuts and then push those bolts through. Uh, a gigantic hydraulic hose on the bottom. Mm, probably the most difficult part of the whole situation. No, I take that back. These two mounting bolts through a plate that's way up under, um, that was probably the most difficult. But uh, definitely a five out of five if you want to get to this point to evaluate. Um, uh, see, the problem was, and you can see like right here, I started to damage um, this nut or this housing that houses uh, the lower valve. Uh, so there's an upper valve that goes into the seat and this is the seat and the body. And then there's a lower valve that comes up from the bottom and that seats in there also. Uh, so I was thinking, you know, by going to the manual, this, this valve body right here that this is, you know, contained in this nut here would be the way that I could figure out my problem. And that is what I would advise. Uh, but don't destroy the don't destroy the nut, you know, trying to get off of there. It, it started rounding off two of the corners, and at that point I just decided it, it's time for the nuclear option. I've got to take this off, and, uh, you know, if I need to take the entire valve body off, now it's, you know, a little bit easier and a little less heavy, I guess. But, anyways, the, the process here is going to be to get this disassembled this whole thing from that picture it's got basically a, a keeper um, spring valve and then keeper spring valve from the other side plus some other stuff okay so let's see if we can get this disassembled off there without doing any more damage so with a select set of tools here we should be able to get this go in the right direction. Um, I may or may not have to file down where I've rounded some of these over. And they've got a, a purposeful um, deal off the end of it there. Okay, so I can get this on that one. And now the trick is going to be how do I hold it? How do I hold it while I'm trying to force this, just this piece off of there. Oh, and by the way, um, this is, this is a lock nut here that locks going up. So, righty tighty actually is not right for this one to get this top adjuster off. And like I said, I adjusted that all the way down. It didn't, you know, do anything. So, um, it looks like I've got one and five sixteenths carrying the load on this one. Hmm. Yeah, problem is it's just a little wide. Yeah. That's just a little wide. Maybe. Maybe we can take this off of here. Oh, that might give me what I need. Let's see what we got here. Husco. Coring. Coring Husco. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so the idea is I've got this on there without impeding on this. Now I can get this one on here and hopefully let me get it down here. Okay. That worked. That just worked. Now there should be spring springs holding this little assembly together here. So we aren't going to go too fast. And once we get this apart, we'll we'll break it all the way apart here and take a good look at it. Look. 
really hoping to see some new damaged parts in here. Okay, so here is what we got. Again, it looks exactly like it does in the picture. And what I'm looking for here is some amount of damage. So we've got a through kind of straw looking thing. Oh, here we go. This thing pushes out of there. Okay, let's inspect this. Okay, no damage here. Zero damage. O-ring looks fine. Backer looks fine. That sits in there like that. This sits down in there like that. And then what happens is you've got this assembly in between the two. And this is actually, this little part is coming through, seating in there. That all looks fine. Um, you've got that then feeding up through here into there. Um, this spring sits over that, and then this fits down on that. So this, these components are from the lower side of this assembly here. Now on the upper side, you've got this, which consists of, uh, I can't remember if they call this a tappet or what, and then a big spring. I mean, super hard to compress. You got your valve seat area there, which feels a little worn, but I mean, not bad. Um, there's going to be some washers that sit on top of there, and then this piece that sits on top of there. And again, all, all of this is on this top side of that. So, the nuclear option is not going to fix it. We are moving on to the second nuclear option, which is removing the entire valve body, taking that to uh, somewhere to pressure wash it, and doing this for every component on the valve body. Ooh. All right, man. It has been a long, long day. Uh, I've been cleaner, that's for sure. Uh, so this is the um, valve body for the backhoe. The, all the hydraulics are ran off of this system and it's a modular system so each of these different valve bodies is separate in this Ford 555. I guess the 550 had a single one and that would have been well I mean it's probably hard either way but let me just take you through like the order of operations if you're trying to do the same job it's extremely difficult uh, level 5 out of 5 all the way up there. Um, first thing you need to do is take your floor out and your console off. Um, that, that makes it so much easier, especially get, to get to the bolts that are actually holding this to a mounting plate, kind of like beneath your feet. Um, if you don't do that first, it's going to be a long, hard road, all uphill. Uh, so I got, I managed to get the just the main relief valve off, not doing that, climbing up under the, the machine with a three-quarter and uh, and somehow got it off. I, I don't know. But this thing weighs, it's got to weigh over probably 100 pounds, maybe maybe about 100 pounds, I'd say. Um, but uh, yeah, once you get that console off, you're going to need a, a four and a half inch angle grinder because all those bolts are just going to shear the heads or they're going to round out. I had both of those situations. Not one of them actually came up out of there. Um, but from there, once you get the, the console off, uh, it's a whole lot easier to both get the, um, there's little split keepers and pins that hold your levers onto the top of this. Um, probably best to keep, I, I kept two of those in for the outriggers until the very last thing. Um, there's a hose off the back of it, which is your main return line. There's another uh, return line off of the bottom on the other side. Um, your input is off of the main relief valve on this side of it, which is going to be looking at it, the right side of it. Um, yeah, once you get in there, it's just, it, it's a real pain. It's real tight. Uh, and finally, you can come to the hoses. The hoses are a lot easier from the top side also. 
um, let's see here, my, the, the, the best tool that I have for this operation is this right here, a 90 degree, um, and this is actually adjustable with a slide. If it wasn't for this, um, I don't know, I don't know how I would have got the job done, to be quite honest. Um, and now it's full of grit and dirt and grime. But yeah, this is this is my best tool when it comes to hydraulics, hydraulic hoses. Um, if I hadn't have found this one, and I don't even know how I found this one, but it's such a good tool, I, I ended up getting two of them. And I mean, look at this slide action. Look at the look at the quality of this tool. This is all tool steel, machined with a uh, slide mechanism on the inside of it there that actually works and is so, so smooth. And it, I mean, it's just barely big enough to get on most of, you know, most of the hoses, but it is, it is big enough. I think it goes up to like inch and, uh, just under mm, inch and three eighths, somewhere around there. But that's the biggest help, uh, that one. And uh, some of these oil field, um, they typically call them oil field crescent wrenches with the with the curved handle. These are these are instrumental in, in getting this you know all apart and hoses off and all that. And uh, yeah, if I couldn't use that one, I would be using this one. But this one is so much more of a precision. I mean, you can see the jaws and the and the difference there. The way that the jaws are, are held into this one, it, it's just, it's unmatched. It's unmatched. Um, but once you get down there, you're going to need, the, the size wrenches are going to vary from uh, one inch, seven eighths, inch and a quarter, and then maybe inch and an eighth, inch and 15, 16. Because you're going to need to get a wrench on the the port that's sticking out of the valve body and then on the actual hose itself. So you need two wrenches per and it's just a whole lot easier to make those decisions up top and um, having the, you know, you got to have long wrenches to be able to put enough force on it. It's just the only way to go really. So I'm going to continue breaking these down one relief valve at a time until I maybe find a problem and then I'll uh, bring in here and show you uh, what's going on and like I said it's about a hundred pounds so once you actually do get everything broke off of there extremely difficult um, five out of five then trying to wrestle it out of there with all those hoses in the way I mean you can kind of shove them off to the side and I managed to get it out the front luckily the backhoe was you know facing forward instead of off to one it might have been easier off to one side or the other but anyway down on the field you do what you got to do and then take it to the car wash and Bob's your uncle. So let me bring in here and show you uh, what a task this is to get one of these relief valves to pop. Um, so they're painted together in my case, um, but you can't, so like I said, this is a keeper nut and you want it to go down to release off of this one, but it won't because they're kind of like melded together after so many years. So you're going to need two wrenches. Um, essentially and they're both one inch so you've got to like hold one and then hit the keeper off and then you can finally break them from each other like that <clears throat> pardon me hmm. okay so here's our first problem area. So this right here, uh, which goes inside of there, it was completely clogged and I'm, there's no spring in this one. Normally there's a, uh, a spring coming back at me and this doesn't have one. Or if it does, it's locked against the sides of it. And it's also not coming out like the traditional methods here where I'm applying some force and pulling. Uh, that's not working. 
So, I may have found our problem here. Let me work on this, I guess. And, uh, once I get it figured out, I'll let you know what we find. Let's, uh, let's do one of these spools. Of course, we got our 3 16 if it's good enough for Husqvarna head bolts. It is good enough for a Ford valve body. Now that's going to be pretty tough in there, so I don't know exactly how that's going to work out. But for here, it seems to work just fine. I've done one, so I'm not like a noob at it, so I can actually show you kind of what I learned here. Um... So it's a uh, it's a sealed system, from what I can tell. I shouldn't have stuff leaking out, so that's a good indication that maybe something's wrong with this one. Wouldn't that be nice if we found what's wrong with it on camera? So for this part of it, you're going to need a big, big screwdriver. So I've got a USA-made Klein, I think. Uh, Stanley and it's got a flathead inside of here and you're gonna need two crescent wrenches one to hook onto your flathead and then one to hook onto the top of the uh, spool and that is gonna allow you to lock it against something hopefully Just against the bench, I guess. Yeah, that'll work. Man, I love this little fuller. This, uh, this one is Japan, and it is just smooth as silk. Okay, here we go. We're locked in. We lock in here. Got a nice, good, firm seat. <clears throat> there we go. So it's got this little, it's got this little bolt that uh, that locks into the bottom of the spool, and the spool is like the piston. I guess they call it a spool, um, but I like to kind of keep everything together now here is the bottom of the spool and it of course comes out you know up on top oh man this one is this one is smooth look at there okay well I don't see I don't see anything wrong with this one and what I'm doing is just kind of closing it down in case there was any sort of stuff in there. See, and it's going, it's going all the way through now that our, our spool's out. Yeah, liquid and, uh, and compressed air. Um, yep. So nothing wrong with this one that I can see. Um, everything looks good. No like wear marks. No kind of stuff that's missing or anything that I would see that's like bad. So we'll just go right back together with it. Yeah, this is this is kind of the tricky part. You've got. I think what I did was this. Yeah, that's what it was. Compress that spring, and then you can get it started. <sighs> okay, so we're getting close, kind of. Um, 
So I'm going to take each individual part of this apart. Uh, I've checked all of the spools and all of the relief valves, and everything looks like fine. So I mean, there's no there's no telling what's wrong. Now, be careful. There's a spring in between each one of these, and uh, a lot of dirt in here, so I'm cleaning all that out. Now I'm going to spray each one of them out before I go back together with it. It was loose when I pressure washed it. I mean, so obviously it's you know, going to have some contamination or particulate in it. And so we're just going to go one by one by one by one, taking the springs out. And I'm going to clean everything off and going back together with it. Springs are pretty nice, though. They stay, uh, you know, with the bottom part of it here. And then the very bottom one here, um, yeah, I just don't know. See, the pressure is coming from this system and going into the loader system. So... So I've checked everything, right? Nothing is out of place. Nothing is out of sorts. All the spools look good. Everything looks really good. So at this point, I think it is the loader. So I'm going to be going through the same process now uh, with the loader once I get this all back together, which was just a delight. But the, the pressure test wouldn't have told me anything, right? It would have it, so the pressure test is supposedly uh, put a put a gauge on this or on this one of the two this one. So you put a gauge on this one, and then you run the system and you you know look at the pressure. The pressure obviously isn't there, right? The the hydraulics are working uh, as far as like moving a direction, but there's no pressure. But the system works by going through this entire system out here and then into the loader and also into the return with additional pressure. So, oh, my dog is really going at it over there. All right. So, if it was low pressure, it could have been this and it could have been the loader is my point to all that. So, this is fine. I'm going to go back together with this and then do the same thing with the uh, loader um, valve body. I'm just about out of battery, but look at this. The first sign of something that went very wrong. This was in the system. Right there. And no telling if it, uh, no telling, you know. It, it definitely looks like a piece of a spool, but I didn't, there was no damage to any of the spools, so I don't know what that is, but that could have been jamming the entire system, and now it's not in the system, so that's something. So here's what I have set up this morning, um, and this thing is just going to be, it's going to be impossible to, uh, to set it into place. Um, without some sort of assistance. So I've got some ratchet straps here. I'm trying to figure out the best process uh, to get this in here because there's there's zero chance that I can actually like lift it up into place, right? So the ratchet straps, I'm thinking I'm going to feed up through there in a manner that I can actually lift coming up through the through the bottom here. Um, and then I think I'm going to attach to the handles up on this, uh, what used to be a window. Now it's locked out. Um, I may put some bailing wire around there to, uh, just ensure that it's not going to move, but I tried to manually unlatch it so it would move and it didn't. Uh, again, this thing is like hundreds, uh, I, I'd, I'd say probably over a hundred pounds. Uh, clean my mating surfaces in there. Got all my hardware um, ready to go. I think, you know, the, the hardest part is getting it. I'm just going to have to set it in here, you know, um, facing, you know, that way first. And then I'm going to have the ratchet straps, you know, hooked up before I'd make that move. Um, it, it's just extremely heavy. Extremely, extremely heavy. So I'm going to get these ratchet straps on here where I think I might be successful. 
uh, and then, you know, I, I don't know, we'll see. Let's see how this goes. I've got three straps on it here. Um, two of them, of course, on the outside. And those are going to be held up top, and then one center one there. These, uh, these two bigger fittings there had an orifice plate. Can't tell I'm procrastinating because uh, this is going to be extremely difficult. And I uh, basically just want to make a move from here to here, let it go, and uh, call it good from there. Let's we'll see if that works out. Back is about to go out. Now, I think I'm going to feed these up and see if I can't get them routed in a way that, uh, that I can come up here and start making these ratcheting system work. Uh, sometimes you just got to figure it out, right? I mean, in this case, there, there's no other option. Uh, there's no way I can lift that and hold it and get a bolt through it, right? So there's you've got to come up with another way. I know you told your friend so, you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. I guess you try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray. As you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. as you fade away, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I'm about to fade away. Cause every time I wake up, I feel like it's Monday. Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain. All of a sudden, I don't look at anything the same way. Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray. I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay? Just let me be me. I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows No, you'll never be the same I don't really wanna hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we could be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I'm never fell this way I really hope that you will choose to stay
Okay, I'm sure that didn't look like much was happening there, but in reality, uh, I am I am 90% of the way there. Um, I've got the two upper bolts, and let me take you through the process here of how I got kind of to where I'm at. And we can do that by looking down through here. Um, you can see the ratchet strap there, and then um, there's a bolt just the other side of that, but I actually used the outrigger um, deals and got the pins and the cotter keys through the outriggers that are securely mounted on this frame right here. That was enough to move it around and pick it up enough to be able to get those, get those bolts through. And I've got the bolts through either side uh, right down here somewhere yeah right there almost full threads through those bolts so now we'll be able to get the straps off of here it should lay back against that plate and then uh, I'm going to hook and everything back up so this is just a constant back and forth basically um, I've got those two top bolts and then you basically want to get your hydraulic fittings input output uh, return connected, started, uh, and then actually go through and tighten up those bolts. Um, that, that's basically the order of operations there to have a successful install. Otherwise, uh, you know, you might, you run the risk of cross-threading one of those, uh, one of those fittings. Well, we're getting close to the end here. I've just got, uh, one, two, three, four, five six hoses to go uh, just some words of wisdom I guess you could say uh, before you put threads to threads make sure all of these fittings are cleaned off and then make sure all of your uh, all your threads inside these fittings are also uh, cleaned off and the best way to do that is to go up top lift them up and then spray into them which is what I'm about to do and then the last piece of advice I can give you is uh, is do not put a wrench on any of these nuts until you physically see threads disappearing into the nut uh, I mean do whatever it takes but hand start it and you should be able to hand start it and thread it on there you know all the way if you can't do that you're not doing something right and you need to figure out a way to make that the way that you're doing it let's uh, see if we can get this going back together now what I mean by figure out another way is like this thing here like if this hose that I'm trying to get on here doesn't go on here and I can't like shove it into place uh, to get this fitting lined up and then get it started by hand see that's not that's not starting so I've got to get it better aligned before it's gonna want to start but the worst thing you could possibly do is grab a wrench um, grab a uh, grab a rag or something see if you can figure out like what angle it's at that's not allowing it to start the threads and then try to get it in that angle you know um, it it's difficult and uh, you know I don't have the money to put someone else through this pain so I'm doing it myself sometimes you can like feel it starting but that doesn't quite feel right so just back it off and try again like I said the worst thing you can do is put a wrench on there you're not gonna ruin these threads by hand oh boy all right now 
one of the most important parts of the job is cleaning your tools up. There's nothing worse than going to your next job and having filthy, greasy tools, right? I'm not, I'm not putting my tools away greasy and disgusting. I want to be able to pull them out the next time and go right to using them. And that's, uh, that's easier said than done. I mean, it's pretty difficult. Right now, you know, I've, I've completed the repair on this vehicle. Um, I'm chomping at the bit, nervously anticipating if the hydraulics are you know, actually going to work. Um, but if I don't do this now, you know, things kind of get lost in the shuffle. Also having your, your tools shadowed like this with a, uh, with a shadow box. Another really important thing, um, and the, the companies that are doing this are, are you know, just ahead of their time. Um, at a glance, being able to tell, you know, what tools you have, what tools you're missing. Um, important stuff. Camera died there. Anyways, what I was saying was it's really important to have your tools where you know where they're at. Um, shadow boards like this make sense, you know, for uh, a personal operation where you need to know that you can at a glance see that all your tools are there. And uh, it makes sense for me. It doesn't make sense at some businesses, although in uh, Rotocraft, where I used to work for the, the DOD, and aircraft assembly, you know, FOD and tools missing was a huge deal, right? Uh, at the end of the day, if you didn't have all your tools back in the shadowed spot that it was supposed to go in, we just shut the line down and nobody does anything or leaves until we find that tool. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a good motivational tool also when nobody gets to go home because you lost your tool uh, on the aircraft somewhere or even left it in your back pocket. Um, you know, so that was a good lesson to learn about keeping your tools organized and know where they're at. Okay, I'm going to get this stuff put away and then we'll try to start it, see if it has hydraulics and enough fluid to move something. Okay, moment of truth time. Are the hydraulics going to work? Am I even going to have enough fluid? Will it even start? I don't know. Let's, uh, let's talk about the, the process real quick here. Uh... And for those people that say that, you know, it's impossible to take a, a hydraulic um, manifold like that off of a backhoe and rebuild it in a weekend and be successful, um, I mean, you're right, you probably can't do it. Uh, I have the motivation uh, providing for my family, uh, making a homestead out in the woods. Uh, the options for me are very limited. Um, I don't have the money to go rent. Uh, I, I spent all my money on the on the, <laughs> you know, house pad and, and house. So at this point, you know, this, this was my only option for digging the septic. And uh, if it takes a little bit of hard work to make that happen, that's just what I have to do, right? Um, all it is is, is bigger wrenches and uh, more determination to make the job, you know, be done in a weekend, essentially. But uh, yeah, you can do it too. I mean, watch this video. Don't be skipping around and, um, you know, hopefully you'll learn some, some good pointers and I mean, you saw it there. I, I took it apart on the bench. I went through every single valve, every single um, spool. Uh, there was actually nothing that was damaged, oddly enough. So the Husco crease crack corn, I don't know. Uh, it starts with a K. Anyways, this, this manifold system seems like it's pretty good. But let's, uh, let's start it up here and see, you know, where we're at. We're going to be listening for cavitation. And first thing I'm going to do, I've got a flashlight in my pocket before I even touch anything. I'm going to look in this reservoir and uh, make sure that there's fluid flowing through there. If not, I'm just going to shut it down and we will come back in like that fast. Well, all that being said, I just got back from getting five gallons of fluid. Uh, there was two things I neglected to mention. One was the most important thing you can probably bring back with you into the woods if you're doing this service out in the woods with no amenities uh, is Simple Green. Um, simple green and water to like actually wash your hands there's nothing quite like and a lot of rags because I mean I was like half of the time like I was like bleeding and like you know bruised up and it was 
I mean, for, you know, most it would be just a nightmare, um, but it, it, it's so incredible what one little thing can do to spark your life in a new direction. Um, as far as determination, like this one thing gave me the determination to do what I thought was impossible, really. I, uh, I, I was sitting at work, <coughs> like looking at mini X's and backhoes and like, maybe I just need to get a new machine. Well, the new machine prices are not what normal for <laughs> normal folks can afford, right? So this was my only option and I realized that and I just focused and did it. But, you know, saying that, I'm going to put fluid in this, I'm going to rock the levers and nothing's going to happen. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. And I tell you what, I am not as spry as I used to be. This this type of situation right here, uh, it used to be fun, like really fun for me. Um, now, it's like, it is quite the chore. <laughs> My back, like trying to lug that um, hydraulic manifold up and down this hill, down here where this back goes at, not fun, not enjoyable, uh, and not easy. Not as easy as it used to be. When I restored that Caterpillar 941, um, it was, uh, I mean, it, it, it wasn't bad. It took me, it took me probably two, three years. I was saving up, you know, as I was doing it, buying this, buying that, buying this, buying that, you know, back and forth, uh, just taking things apart. Um, Having to flush all the cases, rebuild the engine, uh, transmission uh, cases, like everything was was bad on that. And uh, having to do all that was, it was tough. And I didn't have the money saved up or anything kind of like this situation now. But at least I was physically able to do it. And I'm assuming these times are going to get fewer and fewer as we, you know, of course get older and older our muscles and everything else starts to decline. All right, let's see where we're at here. I know you like told your friend you're not okay. I'm not going to go through Tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. Cuz you try to stay strong and fake a smile till I look away. Come on, baby. Please. But I've known you too long. It hurts to watch your blow. <laughs>
Sometimes all it takes is a little spark to ignite the fire. And uh, that's what happened. I can see why some people are, um, like myself, so dedicated to protecting what they built. Um, if anybody came to try to take what's mine, they wouldn't be able to take it. That's for sure. Anyways, get out there, have me some man time too. <laughs>